Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, tea sippers, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered. And I have my girl here with me, Jeanne. Jeanne, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you again and speak to you again, Miss T. Definitely. So I wanted to come on here. I'm in my new house, everybody. So it's kind of, if you hear any echoes or anything, um, we've been unpacking and unloading. It's been a lot, but I'm still trying to bring the content to y'all. And one of the things that people wanted me to talk about was the whole Nick Cannon situation. As you guys know, this soundbite went viral on the Shade Room and all over social media two days ago. Um, Nick Cannon was on The Breakfast Club, and he was basically saying that he doesn't subscribe to the Eurocentric idea of only creating a family with one woman. So this caused a huge uproar in not only the Black community, but also the white community was also talking about this, a lot of white commentators. So let me go ahead and play the clip for everybody so you guys can know what we're talking about. Else, that's why I do it, man. It's not, it's not the number of kids, though. I guess people question the different baby mothers. That's what well, it why is. Why do people question that? I mean, because it like it's that's a Eurocentric concept when you think about the the ideas of like it's, you're supposed to have this one person for the rest of your life, and really that's just to classify property when you think about it. I mean, like when you go into that mindset, if we really talk in that talk, like just the idea that a man should have one woman, we shouldn't have anything. I have no ownership over this person. Like if we really talking about how we coexist and how we populate, it's about what exchange can we create together. So. I've never really subscribed to that mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I understand the institution of marriage and stuff, but if we go back to what that was about, that was the classified property. That was because one a father gave another man his daughter for land. So when you really mm -hmm. get to that concept, it's like, all right, well, we got to change all of this up because I don't want ownership over anybody. I don't have ownership of any of the uh, mothers or like we create families in that sense of we create. <laughs> Okay, so you guys just heard what Nick Cannon had to say. So, you know, to be fair, I'm not just going to go off of a sound bite. Um, I wanted to watch and listen to the whole interview. And I did go ahead and listen to it, as did Jeanne. And so there were some decent points that he made in the interview. But then there was a lot of stuff that I felt like he was being very mush mouthy and mm. that he was talking in circles and trying to justify the situation that he's currently in. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. We would call that conflating, you know, mm -hmm. trying to bring multiple ideas into one. And that's what he was doing. And with some slight success or some success, I won't say slight, but there were others where it was just like you are trying to convince yourself, sir. And that's how I felt, you know, to begin with. But I'll let you continue. <laughs> yeah, no, he definitely was because initially he was talking like he doesn't believe in the institution of marriage but when he started the show he was talking about the situation with him and Mariah, Mariah Carey mm -hmm. and how you know they had spoken to existence having a boy and a girl and you know initially she didn't want to get married because she was you know all the drama she went through at the time of Matola but then when it was said and done you guys still got married and had your children within wedlock so it's very interesting now that fast forward 10 years down the line he's having all of these kids and my issue is not even so much, you know, him having all of these kids, because this is nothing new. This has been going on, not only in the black community, but just, you know, in history, you've always had men who've had multiple wives, even in Islam, you can have up to four wives, but you have to be able to provide for them. Okay. So it's nothing new historically, but the problem is when you're perpetuating this and Nick Cannon, this is Mr. Nickelodeon, right? So he's always geared his brand towards the youth towards young people. You remember Nick Cannon was always a quote unquote cornball because he was, you know, strictly on Nickelodeon and, and all that stuff. So you have a brand that's mainly geared towards young people. And a lot of young men really look up to Nick Cannon, including my own young men. You know, they, they support and watch Wild and Out. I don't watch it, I'm too old for it, but the kids, you know, it plays in this house. So what he's perpetuating to a lot of young men is that this is an ideal situation it may be ideal for Nick because financially he can afford it, but it's not ideal for the average, you know, 19, 20, 21 year old kid out here to be spreading himself 
thin like this with a bunch of different children by different women because it's quote unquote Eurocentric to create a one household family. Right. I, I agree. And for me, I and for your listeners, I'm a cultural anthropologist trained. Um, so when I heard him say Eurocentric, by definition, we are European for us of who live in the North America or any former colony uh, that speaks a language that is not native from Africa or Asia or Latin America, we've been Eurocentric, we're Eurocentric by nature, okay? Because that's what we've done. We followed these traits that were imposed upon us. But then there's these other elements that are available there. And um, I would say, some would say that Nick Cannon would be considered a marginalized masculine. What is a marginalized masculine? This is an, a man who does not have access to hegemonic masculinity. There's four types. There's hegemonic masculinity. Those are the guys at the top. They're dominant. They're white. There's complicit masculines who don't have the characteristics of the, the big guy, the tall guy at the top. Um, but then there's a the marginalized guy who can't be complicit or hegemonic because of his race. He can't be that guy. So what he'll do is he'll be parallel to it. And they do that by suppressing emotions of the complicit feminine, the emphasized women feminine. So you got you can't sit here and use that term Eurocentric and not break it down because what you're doing, you're doing a disservice to the listeners. So make make sure you clear that out. He didn't do the he didn't do the conversation any justice with that. He actually made himself look really stupid. I mean, but even with the whole Eurocentric thing, it's like marriage is not a Eurocentric concept. Marriage has been around since the dawn of man, and it was very highly praised in Africa, you know, to, to be married. And even here during slavery, remember, there was more marriages during slavery and, uh, and oppression and beatings and, you know, the threat that your wife could be taken in the middle of the night and raped. People still got married, even under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it's silly to now say that it's Eurocentric. Another thing that bothered me with that whole concept of marriage being seen as Eurocentric to him mm -hmm. is that I find it funny that the marriage aspect is Eurocentric, but somehow you're not bothered with creating, you know, children with women who, who are clearly Eurocentric. These women are very racial. Thank people, you. Including Mariah Carey. She's only one fourth black. None of these women, with the exception of Jessica White, who was trying to get in vitro, we'll get on that later, have been black. They're all racially ambiguous. So it seems like your centrism is OK when it comes to fucking and, pro and procreating and having babies with the women who come from the, you know, from a Eurocentric background phenotypically. But when it comes to the institution of marriage, now that's where I draw the line. I, you know, and I agree with you on that. I mean, when I when we were talking before we started, I was saying to you that I I did listen to the first 50 minutes of the interview, to be fair. Um, and I made some notes and I was like, wow, there's more positives and pluses in this this interview than it is minuses or negatives, right? Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things that he spoke of that were genuine good stuff, and I know we'll get into that, but you kind of really you know a lot of us he was saying something like oh y'all are robbing me of my energy he used about a word like interrogation or something like that but it's like you put your information out here for us to be able to have a point of contention with you and yeah it's fair for you to have your business to yourself but to expose yourself and then what you're saying and what you're doing doesn't match up and so this is where the critique comes in at Mr. Cannon so I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's my whole issue is, you know, he was he was talking a lot about energy. You know, he was mm -hmm. being very woke during the interview. And I and I get that. I understand about reading people's auras and, you know, haters are not necessarily haters. They're they're interrogators. That's what he was saying. And that's I what it was. That. Yeah. But, you know, you're also in the public eye. And he also needs to understand, again, your brand, how you introduce yourself to the world is what people, like it or not, expect of you. If you introduce yourself, that's why I always tell people, be careful when you're trying to be a social media, quote unquote, influencer, because mm -hmm. however you go viral, however we're introduced, people will pigeonhole you and that's how they want to see you. So for years, we've always known him as the quote unquote, straight laced, Nick Cannon, good guy, beautiful smile, 
funny. He does more stuff with the teens. He's always pulled back bitches. We're not going to take that from him. We've always known he's dated, you know, bad chicks. But we always thought he had a level of consciousness where he also had like a level of self-control, you know, when he carried himself a certain way. So to see him twist um, the past few years, it's just not a good look for a lot of people because had he come out and been like a future and be a young boy, nobody would have really cared that much. But when you say Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon, his name is not synonymous with being ratchet and being, you know, out there willy nilly. And having his business all in the streets and having all these baby mamas. So that's yeah. what he doesn't understand. That's where a lot of these opinions are coming from. Not so much as judging, because he's grown and he's rich. He can do what he wants to do. Yeah. But I think a lot of it is more or less disappointment. Because we don't have a lot of good, positive Black male role models in the community for a lot of the young Black youth. And that's mm -hmm. one thing. You can talk about finance. You can talk about racism. You can talk about police brutality. But we also have to talk about the family structure because that is where the breakdown has happened to why a lot of the youth are running around here crazy like they are today. And why a lot of these young girls, their mentality is to chase the bag mentality by any means possible. That's true. Uh, you know, and it's something else that I, I picked up in the interview and it was and, and I might be jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, he was talking to Charlemagne and DJ Envy about, you know, Y'all with y'all, girl, y'all had y'all day one chick. I, I didn't have a day one chick. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. never, and he doesn't have to. He never, nobody really truly knows what really happened between he and Mariah. We know that he got sick. And then I know that they had their separation. And then he had his issues. He's act, to me, it seems like he's hurting. And there are things that are going on with him that are, not of our concern. We do admire you, Nick. We like some of the things that you've done in the past and everything that you said, the way he came out is the way we have this picture of him. And as an adult man, he has the right to want to change his tune. But again, the actions for you to be out here in the streets, your brand, your internationally owned, your words and your brand and your actions have to all kind of be in sync. If not, keep that shit quiet. Keep them on why you got them out here, you know, putting your business out here if you don't want the scrutiny. We we you have the right to privacy, but when you put your stuff out here and we're looking at these women and you espousing about how much you are supporting the community over here and doing the things over here, but yet we don't see the woman looking like your mother, we have a problem. Some of us, and we have a right to to challenge that. It's fair, it's in the public fear you know right and even when he said that he didn't want to be living two different lives he wants to be so honest with these women and that you know he doesn't want to have himself in public one way but then behind the scenes he's doing something else but the problem with that is like you said your brand shows a whole different you know persona right so right. everything you're doing definitely conflicts with your brand so I want to play something else from the interview where he talked about how, you know, all of these women, they know about each other. So let me go ahead and play that part of the interview, because right. that's another part to me that does not coincide with what was being said. Me too. By Jessica me too. White. So let's go ahead and play that. Mm. I'm living my face. And I'm saying, I, again, cheating isn't even such a good word because if I go if I go into the situation, you know, whether you want to put terms on it, you know, all type of labels and stuff, but you know that I can say like monogamy or uh, one person and one person, I, that's difficult for me. I don't, I can't do that. I did that very well within my marriage, but I, I'd be lying if I would say that I was sitting in that situation and another woman never crossed my mind. Does it make you crazy when people? When they, they when they judge your relationship online, oh, like I remember, oh, uh, you just had your recent baby, and you were in the strip club with me, and people were like, "How was he in the strip club? He <laughs> just had a baby an hour ago." That's just our time management. <laughs> uh, All right, so you guys just heard that, and you guys heard about how he said, you know, and I, and I respect his honesty by saying that you know he cannot see himself being monogamous. It's just too much work. It's hard. He was monogamous in his marriage, but he can't do it now. Now, my whole thing is this. Yes, he's honest about that. That's what he's saying on The Breakfast Club. But to me, Nick Cannon has a lot of chaotic energy. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to cover it up 
this ain't nothing but ghetto hood behavior, trailer <laughs> trash behavior. It's not black or white because there's white folks who got a shit ton of kids by different men and women. There's, you know, Latinos. So it's not about black, white or whatever. This is like a ghetto mentality. This is a trailer trash mentality. I'm going to have four kids in the span of a year by different women. There's just nothing cute about that. You know, that's my personal opinion. But he's saying that all these women knew about each other. You know, he's very honest. They know what they're getting into. But Nick Cannon, you know, he needs to remember, you know, the Internet don't sleep. We keep receipts, honey. And mm -hmm. from what Jessica White was saying not even a year ago, you and her were in a serious relationship, even though you never claimed her publicly. Jessica kept putting it out there. But she said that she didn't know about Brittany Bell being pregnant until Brittany Bell announced it to the world. Nick Cannon never told her. So which one is it? Are you being open with these women and letting them know that you're sleeping with each of these women raw and there's a potential for a pregnancy? Or are you still creeping and not being honest? Because I want to go ahead and play something that Jessica White said that really stood out to me. So let me go ahead and get that set up. Dude. You know we keep receipts, honey. I know you do. Do nobody keep receipts <laughs> like you? I forget, girl, but you don't. <laughs> Loved each other deeply. It was a serious thing. It wasn't a you know sexual hookup thing. It wasn't no, it was a years. fling. It was like a real six, almost six years. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just had unconditional love for each other, and we were friends. You know, when you have a a really close friendship of, with a person, you just know each other. And you kind of have an understanding of how things are going to move and how you position yourselves. He understood me and my craziness, and I understood his, and we just meshed. We got a well, we got along well, and we were actually in a really good space before it ended. You know, were you in love with him? Absolutely. Was he in love with you? Yes. Oh. Are you still in love with him? No. Wow. Soul ties have been severed for sure. Okay. And that, and that, and I know, you know, what we saw on Instagram, uh, there was, which again, you are very private, but you did uh, reclaim your life to your own and that you weren't sharing it with him anymore because he had recently had, uh, it had been discovered they had a kid with Brittany Bell, another kid, second kid. Mm -hmm. um, you weren't aware that she was pregnant? No, but she was aware that I had just had a miscarriage mm. two weeks prior to her news coming up because mm. he told me that he told her. Um, and I was living at his house, and she knew that as well. Um, but I found out on Instagram, along with the rest of the world. And wow. Did you feel betrayal at that point? I felt a lot of things, which I won't even relive. Because mm -hmm. um, you have to remember, I was going through still her, my hormonal changes, and we were about to start in vitro. Mm -hmm. So, so were, when I came out, people thought like, oh, I was this home wrecker. No, you there was a real life going on. I was bullied for months with that whole situation because I was still trying to be nice about it. And like, I didn't break up. We didn't break up right away. We were actually still trying to, you know, work things out. He was with me for my birthday. Like, it wasn't until I went home to New Orleans to visit family where I had to ask myself some heavy duty questions like definitively, Angel, is this something that you feel like you can handle? Can you stay here and deal with this? And the answer ended up being no. Did he protect you at all? Because I, I would feel like if someone was attacking me that I'd want my partner. I told him, to we actually spoke about it maybe three weeks ago when he said he was going to right his wrongs and say something. He has yet to do that. So, I mean, I'm looking, I think he's a man of his word and he eventually will in his own time. But that has to be incredibly painful. It is very much so. And I expressed I that imagine. to him as well. well I, I, as, I, as a woman, I can't even imagine having the man that I was trying to have a baby with not defend me publicly. He should have, but yeah. he, you know, what, he said he will, so I believe that. What was the biggest betrayal? Was it the fact that he was having a kid with this woman, or the, fact, the fact that, or that the he, fact that he didn't protect you when you were being attacked by people? Right. For what yeah, I mean, was listen, out? the child was conceived when we weren't together. We had broken up for eight months. I that's the reason why I didn't like flip out about it because right. stuff happens, and I'm a very reasonable woman. For me, it was you know how private I am, and you know how sensitive I am, and you know how emotional I am. You need to say something. And exactly. he just, he's, he personally handles, he doesn't even really stand up for himself publicly, you know? Um, so I know how he operates, but it became something where I was like, you but need to do something about it. He stood this. up for himself with Viacom, though. Absolutely, he I mean, did. Very profoundly. Yeah, he did. So, so was he going through that at the same time yes, this was happening? Yes, and I was there with him. So for me, being the lover that I am, I put all that aside and was still there to support him. I flew out, came, I flew out here to be with him when he was going through all that. Mm -hmm. When Brittany Bell posted that she was pregnant with a second child, did you feel that she did that as a way of becoming a wedge between you two? 
I don't know. You have to ask her. Mm -hmm. But the timing was interesting. If she was aware that as a woman you were going through this, such a loss, and then to go and do that, um, and Nick didn't even uh, come out and say that he had a kid on the way. You have that's, to ask that her. That smile, as a woman, I know that smile so much. That smile, yeah. Well, they recently just took pictures at her baby shower where she was sitting on his lap and looking like a perfect family. What did you think about that? I didn't see that. I'm just now oh, hearing about this. I'll send it to you. I don't want it. Okay. All right. So you guys just heard that. Mm -hmm. And what she's saying is that, remember, when she was coming out claiming Nick and leaving all these sweet messages on his Instagram, and he was basically ignoring her. He wouldn't reply back. And then Brittany Bell came out and announced her pregnancy. Then... Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.